Okay, I just see online database just came up. Yeah, I'm I'm recording our okay. All right, I'm recording our session from here on out. I uh, did get a request from someone who cannot attend tonight, so maybe in the future we'll have one more one more warm body here. Yes. So let me let me let me say I cannot seem to unshare once I share. The way you normally share is you go to call, and yep. it says share screens. And when I do call share screens, there was another window that popped up, but then there's there's nothing after that. So let, let me go back to my presentation and interrupt me on the presentation. But let me let me see if I can find my presentation now. Uh, I'm sharing the screen, and we were talking about. I'm going to maximize my screen because I don't think I can get to the chat window where I'm going to work on that offline, but that seems to be an issue. The presenter can't see the chat window, and Mike's point about having a moderator, the moderator will be able to see the chat window and convey what has to be conveyed to the moderator, uh, to, to the presenter. So our goals of can we make this meeting interactive, you forget that we're not in the same room, you just distracted me enough that I... I I remember that we're we're in the same room, so um, that's not a good idea. Uh, try to to kind of work the program at the same time doing the presentation. That's why a moderator, I think, is an absolute must. So let's let's put that on the back burner and see if we can work that out at, at a future date. But right now, I'm going to talk a little bit about databases, and this is your field, Bob. What is a database? I'm getting a lot of feedback now. And I'm not seeing some stuff. I'm getting more picture than I'm getting of your, your screen share. I wonder if I can... Oh, here. I can, I can make this smaller. Oh, okay, okay. I just made them smaller. Okay. Okay. So I made those smaller. It's just a collection of information that's put into a file that's easily manageable, manageable through menus. That's the way I look at it. Okay. Anybody want to add or subtract to that? Okay, Bob is saying it's a collection of data. Agree? So um, let me do something here, if this works. Um, OK, if I unhide what I have hidden here in white on white, like the polar bear, and turn it back to black, would you guys consider a word processor a database? Okay. It has data in it that's storing it in a file, and that's just storing it in a file in a in a word processor type file. Okay. So Sounds it, good to me too. It it has data. It is being stored in a file. And you said something about being accessible. It's accessible, but does the data have to be structured? No. I think so. He has to have a key and he has to have a kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, orders. Well, again, back to the word processor. What, what is a structure? If I type in a paragraph here, a paragraph there, a paragraph everywhere, how is that structured? Other than by paragraphs. But that has no structure. Yeah. The whole, the entire word process of a letter, whatever it is, that is the the, uh, the record. Right. Now, what I mean by structured is is a carryover really from the old days. From what I remember in the past, uh, database is like a collection of records. Right. And in the old days, we had. And the structure could have been in many different ways. Right. Primary key, secondary key, and all that stuff. All that good stuff, yep. 
He had Lotus data, a Lotus spreadsheet. And before that was, uh, what was the one before Lotus around the same time? It was called... Um, Trisic, tr uh, Visicalc. 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 Yep. And that was structured in the way of, you know, cells. Now where is my old-fashioned... Let me go find it again here. When I used to teach databases, we used to teach very, very structured databases where you had column headings, which are typically called fields. Yep. And each row was typically called a record. Yep. And where is that? 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 I had it open and it closed on itself. Access step by step. Let's see if this is it. I think I have too many things open on my computer. Even my word won't open. It is pushing resources. Here it is. Okay. Okay, when I used to teach Access many, many years ago, you know, we talk about what is a database, and we, we did say that we had column headings, and they were typically referred to as fields, and then we had rows, and each row was a record, and the content, the data, would be you know, pretty well structured. That, that is, you'd have to put in every piece of data similarly, um, you know, with the date, format the same, although if the format was changed, you could change it back to another format, no big deal. And you had names, and the names were limited also to a certain amount of size, and you had um, a, a, a field space of 50 characters, that would be okay for, for most first names and last names, you know, similarly. Phone numbers again, with the parentheses, and now you use the, the, the area code, the dots, um, and the money, that would be a, a, a type of field. It would be numeric, or cur currency, two decimal places. If it wasn't numeric uh, with money, it would have to be defined in terms of either integer or, or um, what's, the, uh, what's the other kind of data where you're allowed decimal points. Uh, um, would you, could you have a different currency on the amount of uh, money? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, but not not in the same not in the same structure. I mean, if I had pounds and I had dollars, I'd have to have really a conversion. I'd have to have it all structured. I'd have to have all United States currency. Could it be, could it be some uh, euros, some dollars? I not in the same not in the same field. It wouldn't make any sense unless I mean unless a programmer was smart enough to detect that and then, you know, convert it on the fly or, or recognize the pound sign, the euro sign, and uh, convert it later on down the road. But <clears throat> typically, uh, you know, someone who was entering data would enter in the same kind of data. Uh -huh. But, I mean, I but, but you, could, you could potentially, let, let's say with international companies, I suppose you could type something in French and then have it convert to English on the fly or it could have a little pop up to say, you know, is this French or is this uh, English or is this a Chinese? But, but just to keep a simple database simple, it's all well defined. It's, this is can the way I, we used to do it. Can I give you a take on this? Sure, absolutely. Um, whenever I put a column of numbers into a spreadsheet, I try to put another column right next to it that says what units they are, whether it's pounds or kilograms or centimeters or cubic feet or whatever it is, it'll save your sanity when you go back to look at that later and try to figure out what you were doing. So it, it's sort of documentation. Good point. Absolutely good point. Sure. Um, putting in the quantities. I mean, if this were an order form, uh, yes, you would put in the quantity in one column and you put in the units in another column. Um, but then you can add, uh, add the, the column. Uh, well, you have to normalize it somehow to do that. Yes, you have to make it all the same units, but 
you could handle that with a program or, or a function to do that. Anyway, the point is you have to know what you're dealing with, and a number by itself doesn't mean anything. It has to have some units attached to it. Right. And now, it is also possible, and this is a carryover from some other databases. I've worked with FileMaker Pro, which is popular on the Mac. And you could actually put more than one type of um, value in a field. You know, for example, with shirt sizes um, or, or colors of, of uh, shirts. I mean, you could have one field for uh, color and separate field for size. Or you could just have a multiple um, value field, which would have both color and size. So, and, and that is now in some of the more contemporary versions of Access, I believe. Starting with, I'm going to guess, 2010, uh, where you can have multiple values in a given field. So I suppose you could have pounds and you could have dollars in the same field. But to keep it simple, uh, I, would, I would really put it in separate fields. I put the amount in one field and perhaps the units in another field. Or if it's all United States currency, it doesn't matter. Just stick in the dollar yeah, that sign. Would be, that would be easier to program it with the unit next to it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at some um, online databases that I'm using it loosely because, again, I start out by asking the question, what is a database? And I start off with a word processor, which you don't think of as a database, but it is really a database, just like any other collection of information. So let me see if I get back to the presentation easily. And if not, I will just wing it. See word open. Okay, so the the first kind of database that I'm going to look at uh, as an example of a database is a sports card collection, and in particular baseball cards. The uh, second kind of illustration that we're going to look at is um, a home inventory, and I call it a uh, template because it's already structured for you. You don't have to do anything. The first example, the sports card database, is also structured, and it's pretty pretty well fixed. It's pretty well written in stone, and you're really locked into whatever it does. But if people are into collecting cards or collecting stamps or collecting anything, those kind of databases are fine because that's all they really need. Uh, whereas with a uh, home inventory, there might be some modification that you have to do to it. So you have a template. You can use it immediately if you wish or you can extend it and you can modify it. And then I'm going to show you a third example of a database which I believe, in my estimation, is the form that defines the content. It's a form that actually defines the structure. You don't even need to have the data to start with. You create a form, and by creating the form, you get your structure to your data. Um, and I'm using Google Forms, which is similar to what I use for Surveys. I use uh, Survey Monkey. It's very popular, but I'm going to be uh, using something that's readily available to anyone. Google Forms, and demonstrating that. So let's take a look at sports card databases. And let me go to my bookmarks. And it's NN Collector Software. I think this is it. Okay. And you see the kinds of collections you can use uh, are guns, which I'm not into, knives, Japanese swords, coins, stamps, gems, and so forth. Um, these are not free, but typically they give you a trial period. And let me see if I can find my particular database. Uh, da, 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 da. I did. Let me go back to my bookmarks. Here it is. Oh, oh what, what I'm, uh, I'm going to show you before I get into my database, if I can find it, is people who collect baseball cards or any other kind of sports memorabilia, there's an actual 
tracking system or, or grading system for tracking the value of the card. And it's by PSA, which is not the prostate specific antigen test, but it stands for it stands for Professional Sports Authenticator. Professional Sports Authenticator. So what they have here is, and it's just geared for people who, who do uh, trading of these sports car memorabilia or go to shows, which I don't go to, and I'm not involved in this, but that was kind of neat that they have a 10-point grading system um, based on the quality of the card. So they abbreviate things like, uh, go ahead, I hear a comment coming in. Bob, you into us or Mike? Somebody say it wasn't something? Me. It wasn't me. Oh. Um, I want to pretend like we're in the same room. So if I hear if I hear a grunt, I'm going to call on you. <laughs> okay. No, I didn't say a word. Uh, that's okay if you do say a word. But but the the grading system here is uh, a virtually perfect card is abbreviated GEM MT dash 10 so I think that's kind of almost um, once once you learn that particular system it kind of all makes sense mint 9 is a lower level and then it goes down near mint 8 so that they, they keep putting in different um, codes here they don't just have a single numeric code why they don't have that I don't know but that's the way they do it so let me see if I can find the database itself that I downloaded. Not downloaded, it's all online. So let me go back and see where that is. If it's online, it should be readily available there. And I don't see it right now. Okay, let me go back to the bookmarks. And recently bookmarked. Here it is. That should be it. Sports card database. Aha, this is it. Okay. So that collection of of uh, of of uh, databases, I chose specifically the sports card database, and it has different kinds. It has baseball cards, basketball, football, hockey. And uh, I chose baseball cards. Now, I don't know, quite honestly, uh, I haven't had enough time to play with this, of how to get to my database, except other than to type in something related to baseball. That's what I did. So I am from originally from Philadelphia. So the Philadelphia Phillies, I searched for that. And it came up with all these different memorabilia-type cards. And it doesn't matter. I just happen to, I know tops. Is a famous card. I just happen to pick one. And then when this comes up, this is, I, I don't know, there has got to be an easy way to get to your collection, but this is already a built-in set of cards. And essentially, they're trying to sell them to you through eBay. So I understand all that, but all this information, everything that's on that card is stored someplace. So you don't have to re-enter that information in because it's already in some database. But if it's your collection, I click on my collection, and what happens is it asks me if I want to add it to my collection or if I want to add it to my want list. And if I take a look at this as a drop down box, there's that PSA, and I can put the condition. If I just bought the card, let's say, I can put mint condition which would be level 10 all the way down to I forget what PR probably fair or poor level one so I can specify the condition but I'm locked in I can't change this once I change uh, the type of authentic authentication that's already built in also and then I can indicate how many I have quantity that's also a drop down and it's limited from 1 to 20 I can have a check mark here if I want to trade it or not trade it. And I can put in some private comments and I can add it to my collection. And that's it. I am really limited. I cannot do anything more with this database. However, 
once I entered into the database, I can take a look at these other tabs here and check the value for that particular card. Remember, I've chose 1956 tops, and for that particular card, it shows me a um, a value over a period of um, I don't see a timeline down here, so I don't know what the horizontal axis is. Um, anybody have an idea what these might be? They look like years, maybe. No. I'm not sure what this horizontal axis is. Wait, here it is. I think this is the, the, uh, the same data that's up here, but I don't see 14s. And I don't see 15. So it looks like the value stayed steady. And sales history, if I'm in the business, there's no sales history. Auction, I'm not doing any auction. And buying now. So this is all tied in, I, I suppose, with eBay. But again, the point I'm making with this particular um, database, it's pretty fixed. You can't change any of the, any of the structure. Uh, the only free format here would be your private comments. Okay, so any question about this example as being a, a, a online database that serves a single purpose and it does what it's supposed to do, but that's it. You can't modify it at all. Any question at all about that or any comment? Does your cat have any comment, Mike? No so comment. It said meow. It said meow. It said meow. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the next example I'd like to show is there's a company called Primasoft. They have ready-made templates, and you can use them immediately. Um, because they they pretty much will have everything you want, but if they don't, you can modify them. Um, just going out to the to the web for the website, I should have a bookmark here, but if I don't, I can just as easily type it in. Let's see, recently bookmark. Um, I don't see the Primus Soft as a bookmark. I can just as easily type it in. Incidentally. I did do a search for online databases. The only problem is I've used some of these in the past. I've used LazyBase. I did a presentation back in 2007 when we were at Brookdale. And this particular one was kind of neat, but it's no longer around. And a couple others I look for are also no longer around. So they're, they're, um, they're money cash flow model of, of having these free online databases with some sort of premium um, has been self-fulfilling self that they haven't been able to fill, fulfill the fact that they're no longer in, in business anymore. And uh, they have a new term I came across. When you usually see the word free, that's one word. And you see the word premium, that's another word. Now I see a new word, pre, uh, freemium. F-R-E-E-M-I-U-M. Uh, so they're combining the word free with premium. So ev everything that you do on the Internet, it's always a, you know, a gotcha. They're trying to sell you something. You might start off free, but there's some hook later on to try to get you to buy it. But my point about looking for these online databases, a lot of them that were around are no longer around. That's enough. There was enough. Okay, I'm checking the... So they're telling us a new code. Who's that? The new code. Yeah. Get it Thursday, so don't use it. Okay, that's your yeah, it's at your end, Bob. Okay. Uh, that, yeah, it was me. I told my wife she came in with something. So okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. That no problem. That's it. That's being interactive too. So I'm gonna just type in um, Primasoft. And um, if I list all their products, they have mostly organizers. 
uh, address organizer, agenda organizer, art, antiques. They all have the word organizer. So if you click on any one of them, by and large, you'll find them all structured the same. So that key word here with all of their so many different kinds of databases really boils down to they're all really one kind of database. They are an organizer. But they are um, already set up along the lines of whatever the prefix to the word organizer is. Garage sale probably has, you know, uh, what junk you've collected and, you know, how old it is and what price you want to sell it for. Uh, whereas if you had a um, asset organizer, it would have similar, but, but it would have some perhaps some different terms. Fred, yes. Do you, do you, do you have some definition for what organizer means in this context? I'm a little confused on that. Okay. Uh, an organizer, uh, I'm going to do a home inventory. And with a home inventory, you have an item. And the item fits into a certain category. Let's say you bought a, um, a computer. A computer is going to be a computer category. It has some value. You may have bought insurance, extra insurance on it. It may be in a, same, in a certain location. Um, so it's structured in terms of where it is, what it is, where it is, and even to the point of who owns it. One of the fields that they've created, it's kind of interesting with this home inventory, is the heir. That is either the person you inherited from or the person who's going to get it when you're when you're gone. <laughs> so so you'll, you'll see from the actual data. Uh, and it's structured along the lines of a trip more of a traditional type database. You'll see from the fields of where uh, they, they've broken down an item and they've categorized it multiple, multiple different ways. And they've structured the database so you'll be able to very easily get to these things. So it's better that I show rather than describe, but uh, I guess the definition of organization is there is some kind of structure as opposed to a word processor where there really isn't any structure other than words and sentences and paragraphs. Uh, maybe if you do an outline, that's, that's more organized. So I'd like to show that home inventory and you'll see how well that is structured and I have it, this is now a template, and it's downloaded on my computer. I downloaded inventory. Now, I get this error message, by the way. This is a trial version. It says Windows Registry, double click. And if I just click once, it opens up anyhow. And if I start the program, okay, I have a readme file, which I have read. But here is a, a template that has items and the corresponding items. Let, let's say this is now Computer Activa. These fields correspond to that item. If I now click on the Sony TV, these details correspond to the Sony item. So it's organized by, in this example, by the item. The item is dictating more detail simply by clicking on the item. And it's not cluttering it up into, you know, I'm not seeing, in this view, I'm only seeing the particular item and the particular item's details. And of the details, I'm only seeing the info for that item. If I want to see more detail, I click on details, and it gives me the date purchased, cost, I guess a depreciated value. And you see there's some custom fields here that can be added. There's some descriptions that can be further added. If I click on image, I could, if I wanted to, and it, this did not have it, I could add a, a picture. And I have a summary here which is kind of just a nice summary of all the information that they feel is a per pertinent. And it's more a, 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 a rich text format. So, 
And this one here is if I wanted to see how this might look in HTML. Um, if I wanted to post this online. I haven't played with this, so let's see. Display page set up before print. Available HTML. I guess I'd have to I'd have to structure that, yes. I'd have to structure that by picking the item field. I'm not prepared to do that tonight, but so here we have the item. Here we have details, and they're separate and apart. In one of the other um, organizers, I did see an insurance tab. Uh, this does not have the insurance tab, but I did see in one of the other templates an insurance tab. But that would be absolutely no problem because I can add more fields. But let's start first with the adding of a typical record. So if I want to add a new record, I have a couple ways of doing it. I see new record over here. Typically in the file menu, I can do new record. Okay, it doesn't have a, a, a beautiful WYSIWYG. It doesn't have a keyboard shortcut that I know of. But in either case, if I add new record, let's see what happens. So I'm going to click on add new record. It's asking for the item name. Okay, in my case, I'm going to put my AMD computer. And I don't have a, I have a little bubble help that tells me what this is. Right mouse click button to display. I can put, I uh, don't see anything that I can put in here that would be pertinent to the database. But it did say to right click. I just don't see anything that would be help, helpful to me here. Oh, yeah, if, if I'm entering in a, uh, we might take a look at this, a, uh, a phone number or zip code. There might be an entry mask, a picture mask. Um, but let me let me put in the producer. The producer actually, I bought it. Let's say from egg, uh, from New Egg. And um, category, I can categorize it as a computer. Now these are the built-in categories initially. Automotive, car, collectibles, computer, furniture, and jewelry. <laughs> Yes. You can type in something there too, then, like you did with the producer, because it has a drop down, but you type new it. Correct. Uh, some drop downs limit you. This does not limit you. Right. Right now, this is called, it, it, it's, it's in the uh, demo version. So it's saying it's a lookup field. Click on the down, row, down arrow to see the choices. So it looks up in another table uh, what the categories are. That would be a separate table normally. But so for, when you add something, if you were to type in a category, computer, or whatever in here, would it add it to that data? Today? Well, let, let's see. Bus, let's, let's say business. Okay. Okay. And now if I click on the drop down, yes. So, yes, it did add it. Okay. Yes, yes, it did. So I was able to easily add a new category. Location, uh, office, although it's really not an office, but it's an office. Status in use and I have custom fields here that I can add to and change and this is um, say I want to say I, I built it myself which I did okay so now in the good old days we used to have to do these separate steps add a new record and then save the record. Um, as you know, Bob and anybody else who's using Access and other databases, it automatically saves. If you, if you go to a new item, a new record, it would automatically save. I think this would probably do the same thing. I haven't tried it. Um, I'm going to try it. And yes, it did. It did. It automatically okay. put but it there, yeah. this has a separate button here where I can save the record independently. Right. So I could have done either either or. So that has that too, though. You can you can set up a, a, a button on it when you type it that you it's not really automatically putting it in that record until you click the save button. And where is that, Bob? It, and when you do it in Access, you, you have to create a button for it. You have to create a separate button, right? You have to create it on the form. You create right. the button and say, you know, once I start filling out this form, don't save this until I tell you to save it. I, I've done that a number of times. 
The other thing is when you when you put in there a category and you change the business, you add it to business, so it added it to that database for that separate. Well, let's take the, the database. Let's take but a look. That, yes, there it is. Yeah, it's and, in there. But here's the thing: what if you what if you were to do a report on this right now? I don't know if this would add that to that report, or do you have to create a separate script to tell it to pick all these categories? I just want to print business. I only have this one that I just put in, and I don't want to see anything as category business. Will it still print that? Will it find it? Okay. So it's not, select select this select uh, category item only business. Okay. Um let let me let me uh, see if we can find what typically would be a filter, and I don't rem remember exactly where that was. But uh, let me go through some of the options on this, and as as we go through it together, what we're looking for is some kind of filter for right. for what you're looking for. Is that agreeable to you, Bob? Like we're we're looking for the same thing. I just don't know where it is. Okay. Okay, typical uh, file menu, we have uh, new record, save record, load a database. Now, they're calling a database the entire file. The entire file might have um, different subfiles. Access has everything all in one file, one MDF. Yep. I, I'm sorry, MDB file, or the new one is what, A something, A... I forget the uh, the four letter extension for the new database um, in Access. This is built upon uh, good old DBase two. Oh, okay. So you have you know it's not pretty in terms of uh, a GUI, but it's it's our it's it's I like I like the way it's already set up here by having these tabs. Yeah. It's 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 got the tabs where you can switch. And you can add additional tabs here if I wanted to add an insurance tab, I suppose. But yeah. but let's go to to the file, and you'll see load a database. The collection of everything here is a database. So it can have multiple what we call tables within the single database. And one table might be a separate table for the categories alone. That right. is this this is a field and we normally don't put all the fields in one gigantic database this field would somehow be related to the items and the table that contains the category could just be a separate field uh, I'm sorry a separate table so somewhere right. out there in this particular structure there is a separate table probably listing the categories. Similarly, if you had uh, cities and zip codes, you would not want to have everything in the same database. It would show up in the same database, but the individual city and zip codes would be in a separate table somewhere in the collection, which is finally called the database. So it's um, not looking at the background here. It's, it's a little hard maybe to understand that, but in this particular example, these categories, I bet, are a separate table. Or they, if they're not, they should be. Any comment on that, Bob? Well, there's, there's a table tab up there. What's it, what's, if you click that table tab, what does that do? On the left at the top, it says print and table to the right. Right there. Oh. You, database and table format. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, that's just putting it in a standard columns and rows. Okay. Yeah, and see category is there. It's that category business. Okay. I just wanted to see if that's where it was. If we put it right in there, and it did. Got category business. Okay. Right. Right. But but what we're looking for, Bob, what we're looking for now is uh, whether we have a view uh, a view or a filter that will filter only for business. But right, I, right. Wanted, I wanted to go through some of these things that are more common in terms of uh, of, of databases. Right, the quick load is previous databases, inventory general, inventory home, uh, print, table view, HTML report. I haven't done anything with that. And 
the designer. So I'm going to jump right away to the, de the designer to show you. Uh, what am I going to show you? Uh, I think it crashed. <laughs> oh, it's a, I know, it's a trial version. Duh. Is this that, a trial version <laughs> you're looking at? It, it's a yeah, it's a trial version. They don't let they, they don't let you design. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. So you buy you buy this databases from this Prima Soft, uh, website? Yeah, yeah. You 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 have uh, you can either buy one or you can uh, you either buy one or that they'll sell you a ton of them because they're all basically the same. Yeah. Uh, for X number of dollars, mm -hmm. but file designer <laughs> is where you would be allowed to customize and add extra fields. But mm -hmm. I believe because I'm in the demo or the trial version, it will not let me add at this time. Won't let me add the other fields. I think yeah. that I think that's what happened. I can't can't be 100% sure. And they have. Um, they call them free database templates. Um, they're trying to sell you other kinds of, of databases. They're all, again, going to look similarly, uh, whether this is home inventory or whether this is, you know, say it was, uh, you know, even, even something as far removed as stocks. You could have information on stocks here, and it would have more information over here. It might have your broker information in additional tabs. So, I mean, you could have this structure look the same, but just have a completely different kind of content. If I look at the print, the print menu is the obvious, all records, selected records. Aha, selected records. So if I print selected records, um, I still am not getting my filter. I can print labels. Customized documents might allow me. Uh, okay, it's so looking for HTML. I don't see a filter yet. I saw a filter before. I'll still find it. Um, options. Options have to do with the overall program itself. You can set up this little database immediately as a multi-user system. It's not limited to a single user. And you can have security built in with passwords. So whatever the price is, the fact that it's ready-made, I mean, you can add some pretty advanced features immediately. I mean, this is this is trivial. This fonts, colors, this stuff all in here is, is trivial. But the fact that you can have multi-users on a network uh, is is very powerful, and the fact that you can have various kinds of security is also very uh, powerful. Still that's having lock in individual records. Yeah, I saw I saw that too. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's pretty sophisticated. It's it's a relational database. Um, okay, so here we have find, and find is just finding, find, search and replace. Still not finding the. Uh, the filters on our way. That was where I was. Move. That's just screen control. Advance. Okay, we can export this out. Here we go. Filter. They consider that advanced. <laughs> okay, now the export, incidentally, this is the formats that are accepted for exporting. Text file, probably either tab delimited or comma separated. DBF, it's built on DBF, and it's really got to be old because it has Netscape here, and I haven't seen Netscape mentioned in years. Yeah, it's old, old. It's, it's old, old. But who cares? If it's old and it works, um, it's the way we used to do things, and we did them well. And um, it's also a little modern because it also can export as an XML file. So it's a little old, little new. I won't get into what is XML, but uh, that's more contemporary. The, the filtering was under advance. Um, let me take a look there and see if we can filter. And here we have our fil fil filters. So if I filter by category, 
I would add that over here. And then I have my criterion. So I could put criteria. Now this is poor design right here. This should say, or not say, but should have a what, do you think, Bob? Drop this news. Yeah. This should, this should have the same options that are listed here in the category. This should be a lookup to pull in the different categories. So I have to type in business, and it's probably not going to let me. Or yes, Yeah, it is going to let me. And I'm assuming it is not case sensitive. I don't know. And so if I say OK, and if I apply, it found the one and only item yep. that was categorized as business. And I can now view that in a table. And I suppose I could export it out yeah. into that uh, comma separator of text. Now, I don't see something that says I'm in a filter. Usually, we see some sort of icon that tells you in a filter. And I don't see that. Do you see it? I Anybody can't see? I can't read this. What's on the top there? It's got something across the top. that says none or something? Or every order, none? And something else? Every right, right above. The, oh, oh, here, right, right there. What's that say? It, it, it oh. says entry order. Um, okay, the order, the default order, is the way you enter it in. Then you have different sort options. It has full indexing capabilities. Um, but the default order is the entry order. Oh, I see. Normal. It says over here. It says normal. Really small print. Normal. Normal filter. So I guess to remove the filter, I have to remove it. Remove them all. That's a little awkward. That's a little old. And I don't see everything back. I don't see everything back. Let's go back to standard. I think it filtered it all out. It sure did. <laughs> yeah. I don't see how to get it back. Come on, come on, come on. All right, we have advance, search, search all fields. No, that's a fine. Advance, filter. I removed all. I applied all. Okay. Huh. Don't know. Don't see it. Go back to advance and do it. Uh, put it back in there again and do it. Uh, you know, uh, well, when you bring up the advance, I'll be able to see it. Go advance. No, at the top there was advance. That's a different menu. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't. I don't like that. I see two advances. Advance. Yeah, and advance up the top. I don't like that either. And they're totally, totally different. Different drop downs. And go to filter now. Go back down to that filter and go in there and click on category again. And it's not coming up over there. I would, I would add it. it. I'm adding it. Don't tell yeah. me I have refilter for nothing for. Yeah, yeah. It's not. I figured maybe if it was, it was showing up, and you tell it to delete that filter, but you don't get that option. There was a delete option, but it wasn't it wasn't bringing up business automatic to where you could yeah. do it. You don't have a undo or go back? Good question. Good question. Uh, let's see. All records. Okay. Ah. Guess what? There it is. Yeah, but the, the filter didn't make sense. Exactly. It didn't. No, I'm filtering for category, and, yes. I, and I said, um, oh, I'm sorry, I had less than business, equals business. Uh, the filter's not working. Not working now, no. He's got to still go back to the three records that you had. Yeah, yeah, yeah but the filters should have filtered just for business. Yeah. So I'm not doing something right here. Yeah. That's all records. Remove. You were small. Category. Add. 
equals business. Okay. Okay. I think I not liking not liking this filter here. Category apply. Oh, I had to apply. Even even though if you only have one thing that you uh, filter for, normally you can say okay. I guess you have to hit. You must hit apply. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me I, go. I, I make I made your screen bigger because I couldn't read it real good, Fred. So I used my Windows key plus to open up the uh, handicap mode. Restore. Okay. What is that? Restore and backup. What are those? Where do you see restore backup? Well, you just you just close that window and have restore backup buttons in the lower left corner. Whatever that was you were making, it's under maintenance probably. Oh. So back, oh. Yeah, it has got restore backup down at the bottom there, Mike. Oh, oh, oh. These these would be built in. Uh, you could save. A, I guess you can save a filter template. If you had something that was really complicated, you could save that as a filter template. It's like you could serve. You could save a search, uh, multiple search criterion. Um, and then you could, could load it back into your computer. Well, same thing with this filter. You could save a a complicated filter, load it back into your computer, and restore it. Now, why would you? Want, oh, I guess save filter templates to backup file. Save filter template. Yeah, saving a template. Yeah, so you can just use it without having to keep typing it in every time. Yeah, but this is even this is even more redundant. Save filter template to a it backup will, yeah. filter. Yeah, a backup yeah. file. Backup file. I I yeah. might be interested in these two. I guess uh, this is even. Uh, put it over that save again. What did it say when you put it on save? Save as filter template. Okay, so one's a template and the other one is a file. It's probably it's probably just a text file. I would assume. On the backup part, but the save is probably no. I don't know. I don't know. Not right, sure. Well, let, let, let me let me see. Let, let me save save this category equal to um, business. Which you have business. And and by the way, the filter is is it looks pretty complete to me because yeah. it has uh, less than less than or equal to equal criterion greater than or equal to greater than between. If you had numeric values, you would put between. Now that that should be uh, a little bit clear. Oh, it says enter text. Incidentally, it must pick up. This is a text field. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if it would do it alphabetically. Um, one of this is interesting. I've never seen that. No, I don't even know what that means. But one of just the one record, the very first record it finds, or. Uh, well, let's see. Help. Okay, setting the filter criterion. Set the filter. Double click on the field. Highlight the field. Okay, select between one of all of them. Okay, it doesn't give you an explanation. Hmm. Not sure what they mean. I don't know what they mean. Me neither. I'm still in. Okay, anyhow, the filter needs a little more study if I were to use this, but it gives you, it gives you kind of an idea of, of a, a good way of having all the fields listed here. Uh, because I, I, I just have problems with access. You get, you get a list of all your tables, and then you have to pick the fields that you want to uh, create a, a query on or a filter on, and here, you know, this is this is for someone who is not an access programmer. In access, you have to wind up programming it, and you pick the field, and you pick the, the once you pick the field, you select the criterion, and except for these two, it should be pretty straightforward. But it has has also is empty that there's there are blanks. And blanks always, always present problems with access. 
Yeah. When you when you have a null in a field, it's always a problem. So, um, right, oh, let me get the guys back here. All right, we have the normal filter, and I'm going to take off the category, remove all, all records. Okay, get them all back. Somehow yeah. I got there by clicking on all records. If that's the right way, wrong way, I don't know. Well, it's, it's nice that it, it does have multiple ways of doing it, but some of it's not clear. Yeah, yeah. And it's 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 circa 19, uh, probably circa 2003, because it has um, compatibility with XML, and I saw some things with 2003. But DBF has been around from day one, just about. Yep. So this is an example now of a database which comes pre, um, pre, uh, I guess pre-itemized, uh, pre-categorized. Um, it's it's pre-structured. It's a template. And if we had bought it, we'd be able to design and add fields and um, add items over here, probably add more tabs over here. I just feel that it's kind of nicely organized. And whether it works properly, I'm not 100% sure of until I would actually get to, to use it. There's some maintenance in here. I can tell it's old because it has stuff with indexing. Um, Re-index the database, but interestingly, and I like this. Mm. I like yeah. this because with with records, when you delete a record, you have a hole. That record doesn't go away. It's normally still there. So what what the pack database does, it gets rid of that empty space. Should you want to, but Normally, when you delete records or you delete selected records, you need to have a way of saving those records that you're deleting for archival purposes. Yeah. And that's that's the way we used to do it in in um, DBase too, and that's the way it should be done. And when you delete records in Access, they're gone. There's no easy way to recover them. So um, you know, a lot of times you do things in a modern database. But I think in terms of the older structure, the older older way the databases were were run, where there was more protection and it made more sense because when you delete records, you did not delete them permanently. You would delete them if you purged them. And that's somewhere else probably. Oh no, pack database is equivalent of purging. Is that correct, uh, Bob? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think that's what Access does the same thing. If you delete records and you got to go in and you you do that, uh, it comes up and tells you when you've got so many records deleted. It tells you that that you got to re reorganize it. What it really does, and it gets rid of those those records. But what, I, what in my days because of stocks and we had to keep stocks for long because if you like right now you got litigation going on from uh, AIG still. From the days it went belly up to a dollar, and that was a long time ago. So I'm still getting things from AIG for litigation. Really? And, yeah, and, and what happened, what we do, and when I was still working at Makai Shields, what we did every year, we took and we exported all the old records out to a separate database altogether. We called it litigation. Mm -hmm. So we had to go look for a stock. If any portfolio held that stock 10 years ago, you looked at the litigation file and you could find it. Interesting. You were ahead of your time. Yes. It, it, it worked good. So. But this also has some some good features in here that if you had to build from scratch would be you know pretty involved like finding duplicates, verifying email addresses. I'm, I I think all that means really it's it's looking for the at symbol and those spaces. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think that's about all it's doing. But but I think it has some of the old time good stuff that should be in here. And uh, so I'm just a little rusty on some of the filtering that I just tried to demonstrate. But yeah. it, it works. But a little little uh, unsure myself with the application of this of the filter. Okay. 
Any question about, oh, there's some other choices down here at the bottom. I'm going to just move my uh, taskbar. Oops, wrong one. Fred? Yes. Um, it's like 20 after 9. I got a couple of things I have to do. So it's been very interesting. Okay. I'm going to drop off now. If that's okay. okay. Uh, so, that's fine, Bruce. Uh, the, the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to have a video, and I'll point you to the time of uh, where that will be in the video, should you care to watch. It's going to be on Google Forms. Okay. And the, the whole purpose of the Google Forms is a show that we're going to create a form, and by creating the form, then we feed it the content. So the form is really defining the content. And essentially, it's a survey. You're going to be getting a copy of the survey anyhow. It's, okay. going to, it's going to ask questions like what operating system you're using and, you know, what browser you're using, that kind of thing. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks, for, okay. Thank, okay. thanks for participating, Bruce. Okay. Thanks. So long, everybody. Let's so talk with you. So long. Bye-bye. Like so you got to do like a survey, like Survey Monkey, you said? Yeah, exactly like Survey Monkey. It's Google Google Forms. Right, let me Fred, yes. I was in the other room, and I put on my iPhone. And I type the message, and it's up here, here. Test it from my iPhone. Yeah. Did you see that? No, no. Because I'm doing the presentation, I don't, I don't see any of the, any of the Skype stuff. So it tells me that I need a moderator. Are you on full screen? Even if I put it in the window. Even I put you guy. Even I put you can, in a window. Can you exit full screen? I am in a window. Okay. Okay. I see your picture. On the bottom there on the right corner, can you click on the uh, on the balloon with the lines? All right, let me see. This this says sharing options, and it says hide the instant message or I don't I don't have that as a presenter. I do not have that, Mike. Okay. The presenter screen does not show that. I see. The bottom right. Uh, I do don't have the controls down the bottom, like the video, the microphone, the no. plus, red circle. I have nothing, none of that. When I, when okay. I, when I, that's where that's at. All that's right. What he's talking I, about. I, 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 I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop sharing. I should see all that stuff, and then I'll start the sharing again. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, now. Um, okay, where is. Um, Movie bottom, bottom right, bottom. All right, I got to change this from. Okay, now how do I get the the minute you put your mouse over the video? Yes. It, it, down towards the bottom, you should come up at the bottom, the very bottom. You should see the blue, three blue circles, the red circle for hang up. You see and the red circle? Hang up. Right, you're going to see the I, I, yeah, I have to change my view. I'm going to change my view to single window view. Nope. I'm seeing the chat window now. Yeah. And I'm seeing a miniature of the picture. Okay. All right. I see the chat window now and I see my contacts. Check your view. What view do you have? What view does it say you have? Uh, I, mine, I'm in. If I put my mouse over the little chat bubble down there, it says hot I am. If I click it, I hot I am, and now I'm full screen. And now if I go up and do dynamic view, now I'm back into. Well, it still looks like full screen actually. I'm still looking full screen. Let me get to that again. No, I have. A, I think I have a normal screen. I want to go back to normal screen. Okay, so now what I got is the picture of Fred on the left. Picture of Mike on the right, and I'm a little small circle in the a small picture in the middle at the bottom, and right underneath of me, I've got the the blue video. Oh, oh, oh okay. Mike. You know what I had to do? I'm back in Skype, and I had to go full screen. Now that I'm at full screen, now I see everything you're talking about. Now I see Skype. So right. the question is now, can I share my window and still see what you're talking about? I see the balloon now. Show I am. Show I am. Yep. Right. And when you click that, you see I click am. On yeah, I did. Okay, now I see I am. Okay, now can I share my screen at the same time? And let me see if I can share my screen. 
So I go to call, go to share screen, start sharing screen. Now, okay, so what happens when I go to share the screen, I don't see the IM at all. I don't see the, I don't, it's a whole different screen. I can't, I can't see both at the same time. That's right. Right now you're sharing your screen. That's it's, right. It's a window on top of a window. That, on top of a window. That's it's, right. That's right. Okay. So um, let me go to the last thing on the menu, on the agenda. And that is, I guess I'll go through my Google account or my bookmarks here. Recently bookmarked uh, online survey Google Forms. Do you both have Google accounts? Uh, I got a Google Gmail. That's a Google I account. Have a Google email. Okay. Okay. So um, if if you have a Google account, um. Let me back out for a minute here. Okay. If you have a Google account, when you come up your Google account, this um, checkerboard here, you see I'm pointing to the, uh, if you click on that, hello, yeah, it gives you all the, um, the affiliated uh, apps that part of Google. Uh, you could probably go directly to Google Drive. But if you keep going, eventually you get to Google Forms. Where is you it? it? Did I pass it? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's Home and Office. Google Forms. Okay. Okay, so Google Forms allows you to create a form. And my point about this is, uh, what we'll call it online meeting survey. Okay, my point about this is uh, when you, you phrase a question like, um, what operating system are you using? Do you see me typing? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can put in some help ta t uh, text. Okay, by phrasing that question, you want answers now, which are essentially, if, if it's multiple choice, one thing you have to know about the structure, if it's multiple choice, you're going to get radio buttons. So you pick one or the other. If it's check boxes, you're going to get little squares or rectangles, and you can have multiple choices at the same time. So I'm assuming that we're all using one computer, so it's um, multiple choice. Let me be sure about that. So option, yeah, so I'm getting the radio button here. Around yeah. circles a radio button. With the old-fashioned radio, you press in one station, and that station turns on. All the other stations go off. So if I mm -hmm. put windows here, And just to save some time right now, I just put all of them. XP, Win. Anybody use Vista anymore? Okay, so I put Windows as one of my options. Add another. I just click down here and I put in uh, Linux. I don't think he was. I don't think Bruce was using Linux. And Mac, I don't think we have any Macs. Nope. And I can add other. So what I'm, my, my point is, I think I wanted it to go up here. Let me get rid of that. There's a tiny X that I'm getting rid of there. Let me put it back here. Now add other. Why is it going down there? All right, I'll get rid of it this way. And I think that's the way it's supposed to be. Others at the very bottom. In case there's somebody using an Android or a tablet or something. Um, so my point is, by asking this question, the answers are going to be a form. And the form are going to be in the form of radio uh, buttons means that's the structure. First comes the question. 
the form dictates the data. The data can be any one of these. Rather than having to define the field and how big that field is, and then design a form and decide what you want on the form, you start at the form and work backwards, which is very, very easy to use and very, very practical. I can make it through my databases. Yeah. Okay. Now this could be a record. I'd give I'd give a portfolio manager would ask me for something about stocks or whatever it happened to be, and I'd give him a eight and a half eleven piece of paper and I say, okay, you just design exactly what you want this page to have on it, and right. they actually designed the page, and I took it back, and that was my they made the form, and all I did was create the database to go with that form. Right. Well, see that that's what a consultant does. That's what we that's what we do in geometry. You work right. at the conclusion. You work back all the way to the the hypothesis or, or the the first step. You you don't start at the first step with with your con, your clients because you you confuse the hell out of them when you start to talk exactly. about fields and field types and you know you don't design it that way. You tell them you ask them what do they what do they want? Show me exactly what you want and I'll I'll do it for you. Yeah, I agree with you 100. percent Now is this a required question? Yes, yeah, it's going to be a required question, but that's an option in the design of this form. Let's see what the advanced options are. Oh, the advanced options, big deal, or to shuffle the order. Um, it's not a psychological test, so we, we won't shuffle the order. So I can add another item. Another item is simply another question. So I ask what operating system. Now I'll say what browser. Now, just for the sake of argument here, I might have, instead of the uh, multiple choice, I might have a checkbox where somebody might use more than one browser in the same session. Notice it designs, very dim, but it designs a little tiny square as opposed to a radio button. Somebody's stretching. So for browsers, we have uh, IE, Internet Explorer, we have Firefox, we have Chrome, I have John uh, Stanford was here. I had Pale Moon, and we'd have we had Apple guys. We'd have Safari, and again, I'd probably add other, just in case. And uh, I can make that a required one. And just to show one more item, I can add a text item for comments. And comments could be either a single line of text, short amount of text, or a paragraph of text. Because, you know, I'm expecting people to write, but they don't have to, so I'm not requiring that. So I've designed my form. It's all done. I say done. And now if I send the form, what it will do, it will show a link and ask people to respond to the uh, questionnaire. Or I can publish it and show a public link on a web page. Um, I don't advise allowing responders to edit the responses after submitting, but that's an option here. And those are, in, a, in and of themselves, are checkboxes, so somebody could have more than one choice here. So. I've designed a form. I now send the form, and the form will have this link. If I were to put it on a web page, I would embed it. Uh, I could shorten it if I want. But now all I do is I send it to some email people. Bob, what's your email? Uh, send it to my RV, Francis. Hey, you're here. At this one? Uh, yep, that's it. Okay. Mike? Yeah. Um, what's, you have a K something, you have a call letters of, you're a ham operator, right? Yes. What, what's it, what's start with K or what? K2GIC. Yeah, you're there. Yeah, you're there. Now, where do you think it's picking these up from? Where do you think it's picking the emails up from? That's from AOL. Not well. That's your AOL, but don't forget. See, I look. 
Go ahead. So that's from uh, Skype. Not from Skype. No. We're not in Skype anymore. Oh, wait a minute. Well, I'm sorry. Could be, but I'm in I'm in I'm in, I'm in uh, Google Forms. It's picking it up in all likelihood from my Gmail account. Yeah, that's right. Because from your contacts in Gmail. Right. That's where it's probably picking it up from. Yep. All right. So let me also get Bruce Fowler. I think his is B. Yep. And oh. I really wanted to, I have other, I'm going to send another questionnaire because the other questionnaire was uh, uh, a checkbox, what was a scale. And the scale was going from zero to five to indicate uh, whether you had connectivity problems, whether you had good audio, good video. Obviously, uh, Joanne and, and Bruce uh, McLeod had have a zero rating for that because they weren't able to connect. So... I'm not, I'm not going to put them in this one. So when you get the form, uh, the form is going to be in your email, but I think when you click on the form, it takes you to a web browser. And you feel... Yeah, it'll take you to that Docs, Google Forms, whatever that one. It's a, it's a shortcut. It's right, right. One, two, eight, six something. Right, right. It'll, it'll take you to, to a website, and you fill in the form. Now, the one thing that this allowed me to do that SurveyMonkey does not allow you to do, it allows you to enter in more than one response from the same IP. So, if if you want to, you know, stack the deck, you could you could have multiple responses uh, from that same IP. It's this little uh, program does not capture apparently IP addresses. But under normal circumstances and with SurveyMonkey, it captures IP and will not allow you to vote a second time or take the survey a second time. Right. It, it puts a cookie or something on your. I don't it know says. what I don't know what it what it does. So I have problems with my screen resolution. There it is. My send button is down here. Uh, now it also allows people with with Google, and that's another topic to, to collaborate at the same time. We're not going to do that. I'm just going to send this form to you. So the form looks like this. It's the online survey. It has the radio buttons that I designed, and it has the check boxes that I designed, and there's a little paragraph for you to type in some comments if you'd like to type in some comments. Now, does this come back to your email, Fred, or how do you get this back when we check it? Okay. When I get responses, you see at the top? Yep. I am allowed to check the responses. So when I click on responses, I can accept the responses. I guess I'm going to accept all responses. I can see a summary of the responses. I can view the responses. And I don't know about the other things here, but the summary of the response would look something like this. And when you get the responses, it's going to give you what has been selected. And typically, like SurveyMonkey, it'll give you uh, some statistics, uh, such as the number of responses, percentage of responses. In some cases, it'll give you a, a series of, of graphs or charts. Mm -hmm. um, this would be allowing me to view all the responses since we don't have any now. Okay. Aha. Spreadsheet form. That's what I want to see. If you could just import this right into a database. Well, this is this is Google Sheet. This is a spreadsheet. Okay. So once I get the responses, it, okay, it gives me a timestamp when I got the responses, and it gives me the results, and it's strictly a spreadsheet. Yeah. Now, the other one was the analytics, and I don't know if that gives you a chart or not. Okay, so I guess the analytics would be showing the same results. Um, this doesn't give me the charts. I, I could create the chart from that spreadsheet, but um, yeah. if I just click on this. Let me see where it takes me. I think it's too premature to publish the results yeah, since there's no responses yet, I guess there's nothing. Yeah, there. I'm not, not not sure about that. Yeah. So there are meager 
uh, analytics here, but in the case of, oh, uh, there's a little script editor. In the, in the case of uh, SurveyMonkey, it gives you the uh, percentages, it gives you the charts, and it gives you the ability to share the results. And this is just, again, to give you an idea. This I consider this a database. I yeah. consider a database because I, I started with a form. I'm collecting data. The data will wind up in a spreadsheet or in a database where, in this case, I'm not, I don't want to change the answer. Whereas if, if I were designing a, a, a name, address, city, state, and zip, that would be a different kind of database, and that would be stored separately. And I, I, I wouldn't want to be able to uh, go in and change that unless I had permission to change it. Similarly right. here, I wouldn't want to go in and change the results here. I, I simply want to have the form, collect the data, analyze the data, and that, that's about the extent of it. Yeah. So our theme was, what is a database? And we're, we're taking a look at some that are uh, online, which are pretty fixed. They only do one thing, such as the baseball card collection. Uh, PrimaSoft have ready-made templates. You can use them immediately, or you can modify them. Essentially, they all are the same. They're some kind of organizer. Uh, Bruce Fowler was questioning me about what is meant by an organizer. I think by showing it, it, it is, for all practical purposes, redundant to say, but it is organized by item, or it can be manipulated another way or filtered another way so you can show the results in another organized fashion. And finally, we show the Google Forms, which, in my opinion, you have a form which defines the content. Uh, some analysis is built in. In this case, we'd be able to count. Uh, we'd be able to generate some other statistics or generate a graph. Final comments, final questions, or uh, about Skype in general? I'm getting some, some kind of beeping back on my audio now. I don't know what it is. But I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, now, like now because I was... I was um, working the computer as a present presenter. I was probably all bent over. Did you see the top of my head? Or, oh, no, you saw the presentation. <laughs> see, you didn't see the top of my head. I didn't have to worry about how I looked, right? That's right. Oh, okay. All right, that's a good thing. <laughs> I want to see the cat head on, Mike, before I sign off. I want to see the cat. I'm going to see the cat looking straight at the camera. Oh, right. oh, oh, smile. Meow. <laughs> Meow. Do you ever watch Shark Tank, Mike? No. They had a, uh, they, they have um, inventors, uh, business people come present their pitch to uh, 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 investors. They call them sharks. So they had a, a, a girl, I think she was 14, 15 years old. She invented a machine. Remem reminded me of like a, a Skinner box or Pavlovian machine where the um, they use a tablet connected to some sort of dispenser of, a, of a, a food pellet or something. It was for animals. It was for your pet. So if your pet, if you were away from your pet, your pet would come up to the tablet, look at the tablet, and if you wanted to dispense a, uh, a, a food pellet, you would do it from your, your tablet and it would remotely send a signal to move the lever down and out would come some food. So yeah. she didn't get it. The kid didn't get any money, but I thought it was kind of cute. I thought it was a cute invention. Yeah. Home automation, huh? Home automation. It was a pet. It was like a pet. Did it work? Work okay? What's that? Did it work all right? They didn't, no, she didn't get any money because usually when they present it to the sharks, they invest anywhere from tens of thousands of dollars as much as a couple million. So oh, well. she wanted to market, she wanted to mass produce it. So she didn't get any takers on it. But I, I just thought it was a cute idea. And I thought it was cute because it was a teenager showing in, uh, you know, an innovative uh, uh, idea. Her father, I think, is an engineer. I think her father helped her with the design. But I, I thought it was kind of cute. Yeah.
Some of that stuff is interesting. I don't watch it all the time, but occasionally I'll watch it, and I don't watch the whole thing. I just see what it is, and then I switch channels. My son watches it a lot. Because mm-hmm. one of them is a, he's a basketball, he owns a basketball team and something else. Yeah, uh, Mark Cuban owns uh Cuban, yeah. He's been doing advertisements for AT&T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not rising, I think. Like, like he really needs the money. He's doing the exactly. advertising. <laughs> I have so, a question. Yes. What do you use for volume control? Are you using the speaker or you use the Skype? Well, because we're using Skype, I'm using uh, in the tools option. I'm, I'm going to share my screen so you can see what I'm going to be doing. I go to call, share screen, share my screen, start. Let me close out of some things here. Close out of this. 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 I got a lot. Yeah, well, it, it, it's hard. It's hard to have it all in one thing. I mean, I could have put it all in the PowerPoint and had links. I had trouble for some reason with PowerPoint. Uh, so, do I want to save this? Yes, I do. Okay. Okay, there's Bruce's picture. He's offline now. Okay, now where is Skype? Here's Skype. All right, so you see Skype within your Skype, correct? You see the Skype? Yeah. I go to Tools. I go to Options. I go to Audio Settings. In Audio Settings, there is a slider here. However, in order to enable the slider, uncheck automatically, and then I adjust the microphone. Oh. Right in here. That's what I'm adjusting my microphone. But if I click on automatic, it's doing a pretty good job here. But that's the uh, transmitting. That's the audio. I'm I'm talking about uh, the receiving end. On the receiving end, I you know I apologize if you're getting feedback from me, but I'm using my speakers. I get headaches if I put on the headphones. So I can use. Uh, I use the icon of the speaker on the on of the uh, of the. Uh, the computer. Oh, on the desktop. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah you, That's you, what I use. Yeah. But I thought I thought that there would be a way to do it in Skype. Well, no, the is what what Fred showed you. You have to uncheck it to be able to manage it that way. But if you go down to your speaker on your on your desktop, yeah, that's you, what I use. On your desktop, you're going to see two two things come up. One is for the PC, for mine is the laptop. So I'm using a laptop. I've got one on the right. It shows my laptop up to 80%. Then it shows me headphones at 80%. I'm not using headphones, but that that's related to my uh, webcam. Yeah. So it depends on what you're using. On, on I, only the, have, uh, I only have one choice. I mean, uh, that I'm using is the, uh, the desktop uh, speaker icon and then uh, go by percentage. Well, if you plug your well, headphones. Long way back in uh, one of the uh, previous uh, uh, Skype version, they used to have uh, one of the uh, tools here that you can uh, adjust the Skype. They might have even had an icon. I, I, I remember adjusting uh, the volume, receiving a uh, volume uh, audio in Skype. But uh, either they moved it away or they did away with it. Well, I think the fact that we can talk simultaneously is a great improvement because yes. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not using headphones. I'm using my speaker. I'm not getting uh, extensive feedback. Occasionally we got a little bit. But I'm, I'm not really complaining about the quality of the audio or the video, to be honest with you. No, it's very good. Uh, just like the last time we did it, it was really good. Yep. The only the only concern I have is why Joanne and why Bruce were not connected, unless unless they were really not there, and I thought they were there. Like they may have indicated that they were away, and I thought they were they were actually there, but um, I I called them so they didn't answer, so maybe they really weren't there. I I, I don't know, but I thought I thought we were getting some text messages from Bruce McLeod. I have to look back at the uh, the, the chat. Can one yeah. of, can one of you save the chat screen? I, yeah, I'll see if I got Bruce, it, Bruce, Joanne, let's see. Bruce McLeod, though. 
Uh, let's see, Bruce, Bruce, Mike, Bruce, Mike. I'm, I'm going back on the screen, Mike, Mike, Mike. Uh, no, we didn't, we didn't get any chat. There was nothing in the looks, chat from him. Looks like we started at 7.33. Yeah, all the all the chat is just from who was on. You have the time? The time, yeah, the time. Uh, let's see, the last the last chat was Tess from oh, the, early, the earliest, the first one. The first, the very first chat. The very first chat was right. Seven thirty-three. Seven. I got seven thirty-two. Fred okay. Cagle, well, that's Fred Cagle added, and then Fred Cagle added 7.33. Fred Cagle added Mike Minton at 7.33. And then I typed at 7.34, I cannot hear anyone. What did you do to correct it, uh, 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 Bob? I didn't do anything. <laughs> I, was wait, I was waiting to see if you guys had muted yours, and all of a sudden, you came on and you started talking, I could uh -huh. hear you. I didn't do anything on my end. All right, I'm looking back at my my messages. I don't see actually see anything from Bruce McLeod. I thought I was seeing something from Bruce. Uh, I thought I saw a pop up from Bruce McLeod. No, I didn't. I didn't see Bruce Fowler was the only one. Yeah. I had okay. All right. I may be may be mistaken then. Yeah, because the last one you said something from your iPhone. You said uh, Mike, because it says yeah. test my iPhone. It's that nine seven six. Yes. I sent that message from my iPhone. Yeah, so I got that. Did you get that, Fred? Because you said you didn't. Well, you wanted, you couldn't get into uh, IM at that time. That's why. Now, when I was doing the presentation, that's the only thing. I have to make a note of that. I cannot see the chat window. It reemphasizes it must have a moderator. If we have a large group, a, lo a moderator is a must. Yeah. Because there's no way for the presenter to, to con concentrate. Even if I were able to see it, I would not be able to concentrate on a presentation. Yeah. So I, I think, I quite honestly feel tonight we accomplished one of the goals, which was to make it feel like we're in the same room. Yep. Because I, I, unless I got distracted, I was not distracted uh, unless we went back to issues that had to do with Skype itself. So that's the reason we need a moderator. But as far as pushing it to the limits, I don't think we've come close to pushing it to its limits. And I think we can do well over five. I, I don't see any limitation on five. I bet we could do ten. So next yeah. time we next time we do this, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to open it up to um, some people outside of the club. Because if if I if I just do the 300 and I'm getting five or less, if if I can get another 300, maybe we can hit. Closer to ten, yeah, and uh, see what happens. Well, you should try more than ten, and see what is the cutout. How does that work? Mm -hmm. If you have over the limit, right, right. That, yeah, but I, I flow. But I'm just thinking in terms of the percentages of how many people we're getting with the number of emails that I'm sending out. It's not a high percentage. So if I double that, we should, hopefully should, we should double that. I doubt very much, Mike, if I'd be able to get a uh, a thousand emails of people it would be a miracle <laughs> yeah, yeah. it would be a miracle i don't know i don't know a thousand people to invite so I, i'm lucky i'm lucky i had the 300 names but uh i'd like to get another 200 three, uh, 300 and see what we can do with that yeah so guys i really appreciate it for hanging in there mike i thank you for your encouragement of encouraging all this stuff from Sunny Florida, although it's been cold down there, right? Uh, no, not lately. About two weeks ago, we had a cold spell, a couple of days. But uh, lately, uh, well, it's been cloudy but warm. Where you at, Mike? Today, what? Where you at, Mike? Uh, where you at? Uh, my town is called uh, Palm Coast, and I am between uh, uh, Daytona Beach. And uh, Jacksonville. Oh, okay. Well, you're further north than me. I'm south. I'm in Boynton Beach. Almost where almost. Are you? Boynton Beach. Oh, Boynton Beach. I know where that is. Yeah. That's yeah, uh, near Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale? It's near Fort Lauderdale. I'm about 50 miles from Fort Lauderdale. 50? Yeah, 50, 50 miles north of Fort Lauderdale. 
Okay, that will be uh, closer to what else does there? Uh, Jupiter? Jupiter's north of me. I'm south of Jupiter. So yeah, it's too warm Jupiter. here. Like you said, two weeks ago, we, we were pretty cold down here, actually. We're down into the 50s and 40s. Oh, yes. Hey. About the, we have.